Can you guys find the probability of compound events? Yes. Okay, smarty pants, what does compound mean? More than one. Compound means more than one, okay? Um, a sample space. Donia, what's another name for a sample space? Uh, it's a menu, right? A sample space lists everything that is possible by name, right? Mm -hmm. So when you go to a restaurant and you sit down, every possible thing that you can order is on the menu. It's a sample space. It lists them all by name. Um, the fundamental counting principle is really important. Um, it says that if you take the number of possibilities in a first event and multiply it by the number of possibilities in a second event, it gives you the total number of possibilities. It is like saying M times N. But what does M stand for? First, first outcomes, right? So first outcomes, what does N stand for? N. The N is the second set of outcomes. So if you multiply the first set of outcomes by the second set of outcomes, you get the total number of possibles, right? Yes. So, Mrs. Euglin owns a restaurant. Yes, no? Yes. And on her restaurant, she offers two appetizer choices, three entree choices, and two dessert choices, right? Mm -hmm. And so what we wanted to know is how many different things go on her menu. So we took her two appetizers right here. Yes, no? Yes. And we took her three entrees right here. Yes, no? Yes. And we took her two desserts right here. Yes, no? Yes. And if we multiply them together, we get what? Wow. And I said prove it. Well, I didn't really say prove it, but I'm going to say prove it now. Like prove that there are 12 different combinations. And so you said, easy, I'll make a tree diagram. And on my tree diagram, I'll start off with my appetizers, <laughs> fries and pot stickers, right? Mm -hmm. And then if I have fries as my appetizer, I could offer tacos, pizza, or tamales, right? Yeah. Pot stickers, I could have tacos, pizza, or tamales, right? Yeah. So here's my first set of events. Here's my second set of events, right? Mm -hmm. And then my third set of events would be the ice cream or sponge cake, right? Mm -hmm. So if I had fries, ice, or ta fries, tacos, I could either have ice cream or sponge cake with it, right? Mm -hmm. So how many different possibilities do you have here then? Mm -hmm. Two. But instead, I went fries, pizza, ice cream, or fries, pizza, sponge cake. Now I have two more, right? Mm -hmm. So there's four, we're up to four. And then here's two more, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Because then I went down into my pot sticker appetizer and then split everything between those. Yes or no? Yes. Okay, I'm not going to talk about the spinner example because I think you can look at it very similar, similarly to what we just did. Spin a spinner twice. What are all the possible outcomes? You have fundamental counting principle and your tree diagram, right? Last thing then, back to the menu. I asked you to tell me what's the probability someone will walk into Mrs. Euglin's restaurant and order tamales. Tamales are on the menu. Right here, right? So you can order fries, tamales, and ice cream. Fries, tamales again, and sponge cake, right? So that's two, right? Or you can order hot stickers. Tamales and pot stickers, tamales and so that's on the menu four times, right? So we've got four out of how many possible outcomes are there? Twelve. Is there a difference between the word or and? Yes. Or means you can order, so the probability of ordering pizza or ice cream happens eight out of twelve times on the menu. They don't have to be together. But if we said what's the probability of ordering pizza and ice cream? It only happens 2 out of 12 times because the pizza and the ice cream have to be on the same exact choice. And means together, or means separate. Any questions?